It's easy to go out and read a report about Apple, Amazon, Google, and the Zigbee Alliance all working together, but what's not so easy is to talk about what this future will hold for us in our smart homes and whether any of our old devices will get an update to this new standard. So I'm going to tell you coming up right now. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by explaining just what is going on and telling you how it's going to impact your smart home. What was announced by Apple, Amazon, Google and the Zigbee Alliance all together, which is kind of an unprecedented thing, was that they were going to be working together on a project called Connected Home Over IP and they are clearly going to need a new name for that, but What's supposed to happen is Zigbee is supposed to be the managing partner that the board of uh, companies there is supposed to be the managing partner in all of this to bridge all the gap. The project is supposed to create a royalty free open standard that is usable by any developer who wants to create products that work with all of these different systems and the idea is to bridge the gaps at kind of the top level between all of these different groups and companies. The first draft of the standard is expected to be ready by late 2020 or by the end of 2020 at kind of a worst case scenario. Why do they think they can complete a standard that impacts the industry so much so quickly? Well that's because they're going to be using existing technologies and a good example for this or of this is that that uh, thread and weave so these are technologies from Google that I've been talking about on the channel here for a while and how they have specific benefits to the smart home industry that other standards don't have they'll be contributing those so Google will actually be putting that into this project so the basis here is already built in a number of ways now without being within this actual working group i can't tell you exactly which technologies and exactly which products are going to be front and center in this technology and be utilized within it but i can tell you that this is a pretty clear next step in the process of zigbee thread and wi-fi devices coming together and working more seamlessly together one thing that i think is pretty easy to see is that dot dot which is something i talked about earlier in 2019 within thread and zigbee uh, videos here on the channel as being really important for the space because it is that IP addressable top level uh, layer that was needed to bring together Zigbee and Thread and maybe in the future Wi-Fi devices. So that's why I've kind of been pointing towards some of these technologies over some of the other. The instantaneous worry is that of Z-Wave products and they are kind of left on the outside looking in and this is something I talked about again in early 2019 as being a real concern for the smart home and the smart home industry in general. Now everyone is talking very politely and very nicely about Z-Wave and how they're still very important because of their range and some of their specific capabilities for being that kind of sub gigahertz communication protocol but this will be very interesting to watch as we go forward and we've already seen Silicon Labs which owns Z-Wave open up the Z-Wave specification to counter this initiative. And on that note what is the real impact to our smart homes with all of this change coming up and first off this doesn't mean any of your Z-Wave products are suddenly in trouble of not working and neither your Zigbee products and none of this new connect Activity standard means that old functionality will die. The real point of the standard is moving forward developers and manufacturers have a much easier time connecting to all of these major platforms and that's the real point here so that's what we're going to see more of is new devices that have this connectivity or this symbol on it and I'll go ahead and put up my first take of this crazy looking symbol that's going to be on boxes but that is intended to be what happens going forward now some of your older products and I talk about companies like Google and Samsung on the channel very specifically for this reason specifically this is something that they have been preparing 
for for a while and you look at the technologies they've put into their devices and I think Amazon's been preparing for this in a lot of ways as well and I know Apple's been looking at it since early 2019 as they joined the Thread group which had momentum in building this standard that everyone could build off of. So what's been going on is these companies have been preparing and I could see a lot of those devices get firmware updates not necessarily at the end of 2020 but I think companies like Samsung and Google specifically are ready for this and could be pushing out updates kind of that mid 2021 to existing products to be able to be completely interoperable within all of these platforms. What will this look like throughout 2020? Well, it's going to be pretty quiet. These companies are going to go away and have to make a lot of decisions together. And I think that will push timelines back initially to much later in 2020 to actually having a first draft of this standard out and it will come out imperfectly and it will also come out with needing a few revisions and a, a few upgrades to it into 2021 but because of the horsepower behind these companies once they've made these decisions this can come out very quickly and so we're not going to see a lot in 2020 there's just not going to be a lot of impact here but we will see that move into 2021 and they're saying they're focusing on the safety devices first and then expanding out from there so into that 2021 we will see a lot of those devices come out and i think we'll see that regression back into existing devices with a lot of these major players that we see working on this. I'm sure they're already thinking about that and will at least evaluate what they're going to go back and update and upgrade to this new connectivity standard. And there's one other major impact that I want to talk about here and that is to the Wi-Fi devices. And I don't think a lot of these articles that are out there are talking about this, but this is going to be a major impact. And what we saw over time was manufacturers went out and they created a skill or an action and that allowed them to connect to these platforms. And then what happened is people got tired of saying, ask individual skill to do something. And instead what we wanted was just to say, hey, turn on the light. And that has gone through and been an iteration in terms of connectivity to both of these platforms. And so this next level of integration or this next level of capability will also affect those Wi-Fi devices. See, right now we have to go into the Google Home application or Amazon's application, look up our vendor and say what we're connecting and then connect that account and honestly that process is a little bit annoying and you end up with a lot of applications so what's going to happen with this is you're not going to need all of those applications for all of those different vendors could they maintain it some of them could some of them could enforce this but i think we'll see a lot stop that and just be integrated directly and that process improvement will become kind of that next level of what we saw from the actions to the direct integration into these voice assistants and Again, this isn't going to happen right in 2020, but that's the next step. Things I don't hear within this, will they tackle every different device type as a standard and create each of those individual device types? Will we get standardized feedback signals or status signals or commands with every device type? And will all that be embedded at this level and therefore have to drill down to those other layers and, and then what will that be based on? This will create a lot of confusion and some opportunities for companies to do things better still. So I'm not sure we'll see that, but those are the kinds of questions that we will have to address here on the channel over the year. Now, I addressed a lot of this actually. What was kind of going on in the industry in one of my very recent videos called The State of the Smart Home Union? That is up on screen now. And of course, I'd like you to go and watch that to catch up and to really understand a wholesome look at the smart home industry so you can make the best decisions now for today thank you for watching and of course don't hate automate